All right, they're going to show a very dangerous thing here with this whole IFB movement, the Independent Fundamental Baptist movement. It's not just the the uh, Jack Hiles offshoots like these, you know, Anderson little zombies, but a lot of the Baptists do this thing. Um, a single pastor, and he is the man of God, and these guys actually get to a point where they think that they are God. Okay, and you're going to hear right here just blasphemy coming out of this guy's mouth. This is the guy that's that's going to go in and take over Donnie Romero's cult. And uh, listen to what he says. Selfish ambitions at play. Look, this is not my selfish ambitions to help Steadfast Baptist Church. And let me make it clear, today is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. I'm providing, my, I'm providing myself a, a wonderful gift and bestowment unto this church. Do you want me to be your pastor? Do you want me to help you? And look. Um, he just said, that he is the one that's going to bring salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I'm offering myself. Uh, that's called blasphemy. Okay. <laughs> um, right here is the scripture. For we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. Yes, you call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Talking about eternal salvation, it's Jesus Christ that brings you salvation. Not some little jerk here. But uh, says it again here. So it's not just, well, he just to you. Listen. Uh, I'm not going to put my family in limbo. So that being said, if, you know, Steadfast Baptist Church or, you know, the people in the, in the church feel like there's a better option or you want to, you know, take different advice from Pastor Anderson or find another, you know, spiritual guider in this situation. You know, this, you know. To take advice from Pastor Stephen Anderson, um, why can't you just deal with your own people? Deacons that are there in the church. You know, my, my offer to this church will be rescinded at that point. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. And for me, this is a one-time lifeline that I'm offering to come in take on the church, to pastor the church, to guide and to lead the brethren. And you say, you know, I, well, I want to talk to Pastor Shelley. And I want to know everything that he believes. Oh, he's providing salvation. <laughs> yeah. Um, no pride here. Not none. None at all. And again, listen, listen to what he says here. They had this big blow up him and this Adam Fannin guy that that called me a heretic and I'm lost and on my way to hell and everything else. <laughs> it's kind of an honor coming from somebody like that. But but the, yeah, they had this big blow up and Adam Fannin got fired and things. But listen again to the pride here. Adam Fannin is not steadfast. He's not the real steadfast. And look, there's a faithful remnant. There's a righteous remnant in Jacksonville. And I'm going to work with you guys. We're going to get you a new building. We're going to... We're going to get you a new building? Interesting how this Anderson cult, a lot of these guys can just, they can just do, you know, all kinds of stuff with money and things. They, these guys are connected to organizations. We're not going to get into it here, but continue. Just, we're just going to build from new. They, if, if Adam Fan wants to go start his own cult somewhere, then go for it. But I'm going to have nothing to do with him. He's never welcome at my church. I think my church, my church. He's providing salvation to the people. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. He is providing the salvation. He is the man of God. And he's not going to allow people in my church. I think he's wicked as hell. He only cares about himself. Pride has gotten the best of this guy. <laughs> you might want to talk in a mirror sometimes, our partner. He's wicked as hell. Okay, I would like to point out the fact that uh, nowhere in Scripture is hell called wicked. All right, um, that is, again, these guys will use profanity and they'll say, well, no, it's, it's not profanity, it's, you know, whatever. Uh, that's profanity, okay? Um, hell is a place where wicked people go, but when they go there, you see the rich man in hell, he's speaking truth. And he's saying, you know, Abraham, please send Lazarus back and warn my family and things. People that go to hell aren't wicked in the sense of, of uh, their understanding. Okay, they aren't down there saying, I don't believe there is a God. You know, They believe that there is a God now. 
They understand that the Bible's true. They understand why they are in hell. All right, truth comes out of hell. It's too late for those wicked people that went there. We say it that way. So to call somebody as wicked as hell is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But see, here is the extreme danger of the IFB cult system. And whether new IFB or old IFB, you know, whatever. These guys have so much power vested in themselves, and you just don't dare question them. And they raise up themselves up to this position of, I am bringing you salvation. I will save you. You know, and uh, this Adam Fan and I watched a little bit of his one video, and I'm going to be bringing out some stuff on him too. But he actually says about, we've been in a crisis because we have no pastor. We, we don't have a pastor. We didn't have a pastor for three days. It's been a horrible time. Um, don't you have Jesus? Isn't Jesus the head of the church? Oh, no, it's a pastor. There's one mediator between man and God, the man of God, the pastor. <laughs> no, it's Jesus. But, uh, yeah, just absolutely incredible that these guys are so blasphemous. And, again, they put themselves into these positions, and then they can start sinning like Romero was doing. And don't question me because I'm a man of God. And I guarantee you people knew about this thing long before it finally came out that he's, a, you know, messing with prostitutes and gambling and doing drugs. I guarantee you that people knew about this thing for a long time. Uh, don't tell me that you can be around a guy and not know that he's, you know, stepping out on his wife and doing drugs and gambling. He's going to talk to some of his buddies. They knew about it. Of course they knew about it. So get out of this whole system. If you're in it. And you're you're truly, you know, saved, and you're and you're really wanting to know. You know, you're you're seeing some things, and you're you know, I was I went through the Baptist system, I went through all the different branches of it. I was in Hiles Baptist churches, Bob Jones Baptist churches, Ruckman Baptist churches. I've been in all of them, all the little flavors of Baptist. Every single one of them had problems. Every single one of them there were sex perversion problems that were known about by the pastor and were being covered up, and it just get away from it. It's it is. Uh, my wife called it the satanic cult at one point in time. Like, what? You know, and because uh, she wasn't raised Baptist or anything, and and uh, she wasn't really ever in a Baptist church till we got married. Well, right before we got married, she was in one out there, but and she said it's a satanic cult. And more and more, I'm seeing it. It's just there's so many problems in these places. Um, I'm not saying that every Baptist that's ever been is is lost in, in hell. No, absolutely not. But I'm just saying that there's a there's a level of pride there, and strife and contention and all kinds of things. It's just it is bad, it's real bad. So get out of the Baptist system.